guys welcome back to my channel and to a new series called best basics I've been teasing this for a while but I really wanted to make sure that I had a really great overview of each of the items that I'm going to be talking about today which are sneakers so essentially the whole premise of this is that I'm going to be taking basic staples in my wardrobe and I'm going to be comparing uh, and doing a really thorough review on the brands that you associate with that basic so for sneakers I've got I've got seven sneakers here. I actually tried to incorporate an eighth one, but they were a no-go. I'm going to talk about that. Uh, and hopefully, if you are planning on investing in a new pair of sneakers, this will give you a really good starting point. These are all things that are staple items in these brands' collections, so you should be able to go out and find them and track them down, even if you're watching this two years after I've uploaded it. With each of these pairs of sneakers, I'm going to be giving them a rating out of 10, and this is going to be based on looks, comfort, quality, uh, and price. I will also be sharing a different an outfit idea for each pair of sneakers so that should give you a little bit of inspiration and if you want to see 20 outfit ideas for how to wear sneakers I did a whole video on this around two years ago I'm gonna link it up here if you'd like to go and watch that after this one. Oh, the other thing I want to mention is I am going to have timestamps here on the screen of when each of the sneakers pops up in case you just want to jump right ahead to a review of a particular pair. The other thing I want to talk about before I dive right in is my shoe size and also uh, any other I guess peculiarities about my feet so I'm a European 40 or a UK size 7 or a US or a 9 I wear a US 9 and a half in Everlane shoes as I find their uh, styles do run half size small compared to other brands uh, also I do have a bunion on my left foot and I have wide feet so all of the reviews that I'm going to be giving are going to come from that perspective. Obviously, this means that narrow shoes typically do not work very well for me. So if you have narrow feet, I will try and specify within the review that this might be a better shoe for you or not. Now, I have worn all of these sneakers a minimum of 10 times, so I've really gotten a good sense of how they wear, um, the general wear and tear that you're going to get over time, and also how comfortable they are. I'm going to start with my oldest pair of sneakers, and they are the Veja s sneakers. So these were a gift from my husband and at the time that he purchased them they were 102 Australian dollars uh, and these are an ethical and sustainable sneaker brand. So there's actually a really great podcast that you can listen to with Claire Press from Wardrobe Crisis with the founders of Veja and I highly recommend listening to that if you want to learn a little bit more about the brand. I will leave it linked down in the description box below. Now these sneakers are pretty basic. They're cut quite low around the ankle which I personally like. I think that is really flattering especially because it kind of highlights the narrowest point of your leg. These are the natural colour so they've got Got just a sort of a beige suede tab at the back and they're quite a streamlined design so they aren't super chunky or anything like that they're quite slim fitting uh, in terms of how they fit I've got a UK 7 or the the uh, European 40 and they do fit true to size Veja sneakers only come in whole sizes so if you're in between sizes I would recommend sizing up as opposed to sizing down because I think otherwise they'll just be way too snug one thing I want to say about these sneakers is they do take some time to wear in, which is a little bit of a pain. And I still find, even now, after I've worn them over 20 times, that they are occasionally uncomfortable. And it all has to do with how tight I tie the laces. And the biggest bugbear, I guess, from when you start trying to wear them in, is the tongue. It is so stiff. The leather on these are great quality, but you'll see they do kind of, it, it does uh, crease because it is more of a stiffer leather. But the tongue is so stiff that it will dig into the front of your shin. So you will end up getting a blister there. And that's what I found I got the first six times that I wore them. After that, they became a lot more comfortable. And the rest of the shoe is super comfortable. You won't get any blisters on your heel. But that was the thing that I noticed. Uh, they are really kind of well made as well. Um, I like the fact that they've got cushioning around the ankle. I find that really comfortable. Uh, and the sole as well has got a nice sort of padded firm texture to it so a lot of good bounce when you're walking around and they are really easy to style up i find that these are a great initial sneaker to go for if you aren't someone who typically would kind of go for this sort of a style and also bonus points for the fact that it's such a sustainable and ethical brand as a rating out of 10 i would give them a seven i think that they are really good value for money you're getting a lot considering that 
the materials and everything is ethically sourced and the company has gone to great lengths to try and make sure that they are as carbon neutral as possible. The materials are really high quality. I haven't gotten any scuffs on them considering the fact that I have, you know, um, not been precious when I've worn them. The only thing I will say is that the uh, tab on the back, it is prone to getting um, marked up, which I don't know if you can see here, but mine on the left shoe has gotten a little bit of color transfer from a dark pair of jeans. But otherwise, I think a really good basic pair of sneakers to go for. The second pair of sneakers I wanted to talk about are the Frankie Fort Min sneakers. These ones were gifted to me. They retail for $235. These are a little bit different to all the other sneakers that I've got here because they are patent. Typically, I wouldn't go for a patent shoe because I find they aren't ideal if you've got a bunion or wide feet because patent doesn't really have give, but these are completely different. The patent leather is so ridiculously soft and there is so much padding on the interior that they are incredibly comfortable to wear. These are probably one of the most comfortable out of all of these sneakers because they are just so cushiony and pillowy feeling around your feet. What I like about Frankie Four is because they are an orthopedic brand is that there are additional insoles so that you can actually tailor the fit or customize the fit to your specific needs which is really great and something I really value because I do have such wide feet um, but yeah I have worn these loads they are so comfortable they've got like a really nice cushioning as well on the on the sole really good for walking around in and again because they aren't super big I find that these look really great paired with skinny jeans they are much more of a slimmer profile and yeah they also have that suede um, bit at the heel which again is something that's going to mark up you can kind of see I've scuffed mine here <laughs> so um, just something to keep in mind these do come in a few other colors uh, but yeah in terms of wear and tear you can't see any scuff marks or anything like that aside from that little mark I've got on the heel tab in terms of a rating I would give these an 8 out of 10 just because um, I do think that they are a little bit more expensive but you are getting what you pay for in terms of the quality of the materials the actual comfort as well and I think that they look really nice too. I forgot to mention I wear a nine and a half in Frankie Four shoes. I do find that they run a little bit small. The third pair of sneakers I wanted to talk about are my Golden Goose Superstar sneakers. When I featured these on my Instagram, I got so many questions about them and I can understand why. There is so much hype about these sneakers, which was why I really wanted to include them in this video. These are the most expensive ones I went for. They're $595 Australian. I had considered kind of going for more of a an even more premium shoe but I figured if you're paying that much for the shoe it's a lot of it's for the aesthetic as rather than the actual comfort of them whereas these I think people go for them because of how comfortable they allegedly are and I'm gonna talk about this now never did I think I would buy a pair of shoes which looks distressed and it's funny because when I pulled them out of the box and I tried them on I wasn't really sure about how distressed they look look actually liked them straight away said oh those look great <laughs> In terms of sizing, I went for a European 40 or a UK 7, and they do fit true to size. Uh, and I will have to say, these are so ridiculously comfortable, and these are incredible if you have wide feet like me. Um, I found that I didn't have any pinching or anything like that across the foot, which can be an issue with other shoes, and is something I'm going to talk about with some of these other sneakers. Um, one thing I will say is that I got a lot of comments from people who have these shoes who said that they constantly fall off their feet, and I'm wondering if if those people who mention that do have narrower feet because like I said mine are wide I do go to the effort of tying the laces as opposed to wearing them loose so I'm wondering if that helps to secure the shoe to my foot um, the only thing is that they are so short that you can only do one little bow like this so uh, I do find that a little bit annoying I would prefer to actually be able to do a proper bow with the heel laces but I mean that's not, neither here nor there. Because they do have that really distressed look to them, I feel like this is the kind of shoe you don't have to be overly precious with because they already look destroyed. Um, I haven't gotten any additional kind of scratches or anything like that on them and I've worn these loads. Now of all of the shoes, I actually think these are the ones that are the most flattering on your legs. They are cut really, really low. So they accentuate that narrow part of your ankle and make your legs look really long as well. I find that these pair really nicely with skirts and dresses too. I prefer how these look 
paired with skirts and dresses over all of the other styles that I've got here. Yeah, I didn't get a single blister wearing these. They were comfortable from the very first time that I wore them. And I think out of all of these sneakers, these are the ones that I will probably end up wearing the most. One thing I have noticed with these shoes is they're pretty much impossible to get on sale. So generally they sell out really quickly. If you do want to get your hands on them, you've kind of got to pay the full ticket price, which is quite a lot. And, uh, I think if you're just after a pair of sneakers and you aren't too worried about the brand name or the way that they look specifically, then these are something you can skip over. But if you have the budget and you are willing to kind of invest, then I would go for them because I think they look really great uh, and they do have versions which aren't distressed as well if that is not your style. Um, I give these a 7 out of 10 and really I just adopt points because of the price. I think they are so, so expensive <laughs> um, for what they are for a leather shoe, um, but I do absolutely love them and they're ones, like I said, I know I'm going to wear loads. The next pair of sneakers that I've got here are the Everlane, I think these are the Court sneakers. These aren't the tread ones. These are a bit more of a slimline profile to the tread sneaker. Um, and they kind of have a little bit of an 80s vibe to them, I feel like. I got the dark green color, so they have this dark green leather tab at the heel. These ones were gifted to me and they retail for 161 Australian dollars, or at least at the time I did the exchange. I think they're a bit cheaper now because the US Australian exchange rate has changed. Uh, in terms of these, they were super comfortable from the very first time that I wore them. These are really fantastic if you have wide feet because I found that uh, they do run quite wide across the foot. Um, I didn't get any blisters. Sizing on them is pretty funny. You have to size up a half size. So I wear these in a US 10. I usually wear a US 9.5. Um, they are a unisex style as well. So the leather's got kind of like a squishy texture to it, but then it also feels really hollow and boxy on your foot. And that's really the best way that I can describe it. Uh, they do have some nice padding on the, on the sole and I find these really comfortable to walk around in. I've worn them quite a lot when I've gone for walks with our son. But yeah, they're just a really good overall basic sneaker. If you want something that's a little bit chunkier, but that isn't super chunky, these are probably a good one to go for. I haven't gotten any scratches on them, though you may be able to see I've got a small mark here, which I'm sure will just come off if I give it a little bit of a clean with a baby wipe or something like that. Uh, and the laces aren't too long either, which is an issue with one of the, or well, two of the pairs of sneakers that I've got here. But yeah, just a really good basic staple. In terms of the rating that I would give them, I give them a 6 out of 10. And that is more, I think, to do with the fact that they do feel a little bit hollow on my feet. I do think they are a little bit more expensive compared to some of the other sneakers that I've got here, which I find more comfortable. That being said, I know that Evelyn has gone to massive efforts to make sure that the shoe is basically carbon neutral. So uh, that's pretty incredible as well and they've used a lot of recycled materials in the construction of these so if that's something that is a factor in your purchasing decision then these might be a good one to look at. Okay the fifth pair of sneakers that I've got here are the Common Projects Low Achilles sneaker and these I managed to get on sale so I paid $441 for them and they retail for around $600 Australian I believe. Um, and these ones I wanted to try because I had seen so many people rave about them and talk about how comfortable these sneakers are. They are one of those Instagram shoes. And I'm going to say it now, these are my least favorite out of all of them. And I think a huge reason for that is that these are best suited for people who have narrow feet. Like I said, I've got wide feet and one of my biggest pain points with these shoes was actually across the toe. I got a lot of blisters at the very base of my big toe when I wore these. It took nine wears for me to stop getting blisters from wearing them, not just across the foot, but also at my heel. They are so unbelievably squeaky. I've worn them, like I said, I've worn them over 10 times and they are still squeaky, which just irritates me to no end because I don't think you want to be super squeaky when you're walking around. I think aesthetically they look really, really lovely. I mean, they're such a plain basic shoe. They've just got the little number branding here on the side in gold. So they look very, very chic and they're quite a slim streamlined design. They're cut really low on the ankle. So again, going to be really flattering in terms of how they look on your legs. But um, honestly, 
I don't really think that they're worth the money. They've got a really firm insole. Oh, I watched a really fantastic video. I can't remember the name of the um, man who runs the channel, but he cuts one of these shoes in half and he talks about the material and the quality of the materials used. Uh, and it was really, really fascinating and eye-opening. So I'm gonna link that down in the description box below if you'd like to go and learn a little bit more about the construction of these shoes, because that to me further cemented my opinion that they are not worth the price tag. Uh, and I do think if you can get them on sale, if you just have your heart set on them, or if you've got narrow feet, try and get them on sale as opposed to paying for them full price. Um, I did find that the laces are really short, so it's kind of hard to tie a bow. So again, a similar issue to what I had with the Golden Goose sneakers. And I found that the leather on these is the most delicate out of all of the shoes. So the very first time that I wore these, I managed to get a scratch on the toe, despite the fact that I was really precious with them and I was being very careful. And yeah, they've, they've kind of um, scratch actually scuffed on both toes. So it's not just the one, it's both. So that's really disappointing for me for a pair of shoes that I've paid several hundred dollars for. I do find that they are much more comfortable if I try and widen the laces across the widest part of my foot. But you will be able to see hopefully in the video that there is a bit of stretching and there is some funny creasing uh, along that part of the shoe. In terms of sizing, these fit an entire size large. So I've got these in a 39, uh, and that's just across the board. That is the recommended sizing to size down. In terms of a rating for these shoes, I would give them a three out of 10. For one, they are so expensive, and when you're spending that much money on a shoe, you expect to be paying for really high quality materials. And also you kind of want the shoe to be really comfortable, which it took a really long time for these to even be relatively comfortable on my feet. Um, I found the quality of the materials not fantastic because like I said that they've scuffed really easily um, and aside from kind of liking the way they look aesthetically there isn't really much I like about these shoes they are so squeaky um, I am going to continue to wear them because I spent so much on them but I would definitely think again and I'm really disappointed because I've just heard so many people rave about them so I mean you may have these shoes and love them and if you do I think that's fantastic and I'm so happy for you they just didn't work out for me uh, and I suspect it's probably in large part down to the fact that I have white feet the next pair of sneakers I have are the Reebok Club C85 sneakers and these are in the chalk colour. These are the most affordable out of all of the sneakers that I got. I managed to get them on sale from ASOS. I think I bought them for $78 which is a really incredible price. Uh, I was very very happy with that. Um, these remind me totally of a sneaker that you would kind of wear in the 80s, even the early 90s. I'm Pretty sure I had sneakers like this when I was a kid. <laughs> they do have a really old school vibe to them. The interior almost has kind of like a flannel lining to it and it almost feels a little bit sparse, but they are so comfortable. They are really cushiony. The first time I tried these on, Luke saw them on me and he loved them and he bought a pair and he adores his shoes. So we've got matching sneakers. These are just a different color. Uh, but yeah, these were the most comfortable out of all of them straight off the bat. And from that perspective alone, I would recommend them. The sizing on them is funny, and I think I picked a European 40, which here it says is a 7.5 USA and a 6.5 UK. Now, like I said, I'm usually a 7, size 7 UK. Um, and I did find when I first put them on that they felt almost a little bit short, but it hasn't been an issue for me at all. So I'm not sure if there's just been a bit of extra give in terms of the length. Um, maybe they've kind of pushed back a little bit here at the heel. The sole isn't very squishy, but I do find them very comfortable to walk in, especially long distances. As I mentioned, the sizing is funny. These are more of a chunkier style, which I also find really flattering on your legs. I think that's why those Balenciaga sneakers are so popular. Uh, and these are the kind of shoe that I find work really well with slimline track pants and also with kind of skirts or dresses to kind of dress them down a little bit. In terms of a rating, I would give these a nine out of 10 for one, they are so affordable and in terms of the quality of the materials I mean they have held it really well so far and these are ones that I really enjoy wearing when I'm going for a walk um, they haven't really creased up much across the foot uh, and the interior is like perfectly intact still really squishy kind of along the sides um, even though the sole like I mentioned is not is a little bit more firm I think they look pretty good in terms of buying into this more dad sneaker trend uh, and yeah, like I said, the price is fantastic. The only thing I find annoying about these is that the laces are pretty long. 
and that's kind of I guess the thing that I would dock them on but I think these are incredible value for money if you're looking at buying a pair of sneakers maybe just to kind of try out the sneaker trend or see if it will work in your wardrobe. The final pair of sneakers that I have here are the Stan Smiths from Adidas and these had such a big moment a few years ago I remember everybody had them and they were impossible to get your hands on now they're a lot easier uh, and I can completely understand the appeal with these they are just a simple design and you can get different colored tabs here at the back. I went for the navy just because I figured they'd be easy to pair with my wardrobe. Uh, in terms of the price I paid for these, I paid $100. I got them on sale from net -a -a. I think it was maybe 15% off or 20% off depending on the discount they had going on at the time, which I think is a really good price considering the material and the quality of them. Uh, and these have the roundest toe out of all of these shoes so they kind of look a little bit kind of chunky and squat I would say compared to the others these are fantastic if you have wide feet I will say aesthetically they're probably not my favorite because the tongue on them is so long it comes quite high up your um up the front of your leg which I don't particularly love. I prefer if it was a little bit shorter. And the laces on these are ridiculously long. I have found that when I'm going for walks in these, particularly a longer walk, that the laces will get caught up and around the sides, which uh, can be a little bit annoying and also a little bit painful at times. But aside from that, they are so comfortable to wear straight off the bat. Uh, and yeah, like I said, perfect if you have wide feet. These ones I think look really cool with trousers, uh, particularly if you're kind of matching that heel tab with your trousers. In terms of a rating for these, I would give them a 7 out of 10. I think they are fantastic value for money. They're really good quality. I haven't gotten any scratches or anything like that on them. They've worn really well. Um, easy to wipe down as well, being that slightly more kind of, I would say, shinier. It's like a matte shiny fabric. I, don't, I really don't know how best to describe it. They're super squishy on the inside and yeah, they feel super comfortable. I think they look pretty good as well. And the other pair of sneakers that I bought were a pair of Converse high tops in the leather. I had thought about getting the low, um, low ones, but I just thought it would be too much of a muchness with all of these other sneakers that I've got here. And I had to send them back. I tried them on and they were so uncomfortable. The leather cut into my uh, skin and I also found that they were really, really unflattering. I thought there's no point trying to uh, incorporate a pair of shoes into my wardrobe that I know I'm not going to wear just for the sake of a review. And given how they felt from trying them on, I didn't think they were gonna be a winner. The other brand that I got requests to include in this video was Spring Court, and I'm so sorry I didn't, but they do look really incredible, and I'm going to leave a link to them down below if you wanted to go and check them out. So that is kind of a look at sneakers, and I really hope that you enjoyed this intro into my Best Basics series. I hope it was really informative as well. I want to do kind of skinny jeans or t-shirts for my next one, so if you have any brands that you kind of associate with those two items in your wardrobe, let me know because... I have been trying to narrow it down to less than 10 brands for each one and I'm struggling. So I think I'm going to go with consensus <laughs> for those ones just to make sure that I am kind of on the same page as all of you. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any other sneaker brands that you love that maybe I didn't include in this video, then please be sure to leave your feedback in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. If you're new here and you want to see more videos like this, then please do subscribe. They're probably going to be far fewer in between because I really want to give all these items a good run before I kind of talk about them and review them in one of these videos. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time with a brand new video. See you soon. Bye.